virus time, ladies and gentlemen. Not necessarily a virus today, but actually a phenomenon that was one of the first things I googled when it came time very, very early on as a child about breaking passwords. Now, this has been a common thing. You know, a lot of people have talked about, you know, breaking passwords, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, people wonder, you know, what, what are their, how, how does this whole thing work? And in general, it's a lot less interesting than Hollywood would like to make it. But I'll guide you through as best I can. But to understand password hacking, we need to take a look at history of password hacking, all right? So we're gonna go through a step-by-step -step st sort, of, st sort of thing, uh, ramp it up, I guess you could say. S the first thing in our historical endeavor that we have to go through is rainbow hashing, rainbow list, whatever you wanna call it. Now, this isn't as colorful as it sounds, ladies and gentlemen. Essentially, when we look at rainbow hashing and all that kind of good stuff, rainbow hashing is basically pre-calculated lists of all possible hashes in a given uh, hashing algorithm like MD5 or SHA-1, 2, 3, whatever you wanna go with. And uh, the reason that we use uh, these is uh, back in the day, you know, when computers were a little less complex, everyone would just basically create rainbow tables upon rainbow tables, and these would be pretty massive in size because, of course, pre-calculating every possible scenario is massive. You know, you can look at a lot of modern-day rainbow tables, uh, you know, Rainbow Crack, which is one such program that actually sells tables, perfect tables, they want to call it, with a 99.9% .9 success rate um, for, uh, that are in, like, the 600-gig range. And that's a lot of possibilities that they have pre-calculated and sent to you, given under every single circumstance. Circumstance. Now, rainbow tables are an interesting concept, right? You know, you pre-calculate everything. The entire concept of it is, is that once a hacker pre-calculates a rainbow table or uses one, they can basically take a password hash and uh, you sort of compare and figure out what it is just by uh, comparing what the pre-calculator variable is and what the actual hash they're trying to crack is. Now, in order to get that, you may wonder, what the fuck is a password hash? Now, your passwords are stored in two possible ways, right? Let's assume, for argument's sake, the whole video through, the password that we're setting is literally just password, right? If password is the, uh, is the word we're using, we have to understand that it can be stored in two ways. One of them is plain text, and one of them is hashing, right? Or through the hashing or whatever, or putting it through an algorithm, basically. Now, you might wonder, well, don't, doesn't everyone put it through uh, hashes? Well, for the most part, they do. Plain text basically means that your password is stored as it is. If you wrote the word password, the server is storing it as password. And this is a pretty big issue. A company like Sony, for instance, is a pretty big tech company. But even they were caught storing passwords in plain text, I believe, by LulzSec back in 2014, you know, when the infamous PlayStation hack occurred. These guys basically stored all your passwords in literal plain text. You know, somebody could open a file and say, well, your password was this, without any form of hash cracking, whatever you wanted to call it. Now, the other way your passwords are stored are in hashes. And that's basically taking a piece of uh, text that you've given it, like password, putting it through an algorithm like MD5, SHA, whatever you want to call it, and getting a hash out of it that looks something like this. Let's assume password is this. Uh, if, you put the, if you put it in as password, then the algorithm will look like this. I'm going to use text on the screen. That's about all I can prove it to you. There's many different ways these hashing algorithms can occur and they work. And I'm just going to be generally referring to them as an algorithm in this situation. Now, the thing with rainbow hashing or rainbow cracking, rainbow tables, is uh, it's pretty much fucking useless at this point. All right, nobody's going to be using a rainbow table. And you want to know why? It's because of a little thing called salt. Now, salt is a great thing. You know, in the fighting game community, a little bit of salt can lead to some very lulzy moments. However, a lot of salt can lead to a very toxic environment that you may want to stay away from. That was a fucking terrible analogy, wasn't it? But hey... You know what? It fits the bill. Now, the thing that we're moving on to is uh, something like word lists or dictionary cracking. You may have heard of this because dictionary cracking is what Hollywood would like to show you as somebody getting a bunch of passwords, running them all against each other, basically getting a hash, using a set amount of words that they f uh, singled out, and putting it against the hash that they have and seeing which one works. Now, in an infamous movie called Hackers from the 90s, a movie that I've watched to death, the most common passwords are love, secret, and sex. Not necessarily in that order. Now, password hacking is an interesting situation, or wordless, or dictionary cracking, so we want to call it, where think of it like kind of a rainbow table, right? 
A rainbow table will use almost every possible scenario, right? Almost every possible preconceived notion that we're using. So let's assume that the password we're trying to crack is uh, literally, of course, password, which is eight characters long. Now, in a rainbow table, you're pre-calculating for all eight of those characters in a given algorithm that it's used. You have to know what algorithm it is, you have to know how it's been seeded, all that kind of stuff, but generally, that's how a rainbow table will be. Once you have all those prerequisites, you can run it against that eight uh, character rainbow table, given all those possible scenarios, all the time it takes, and uh, see which one's right. Now, a dictionary crack, basically in very layman's term, uses kind of like a rainbow table, but it narrows down all the selections to all possible human inputs. So let's assume that we have eight characters, right? Password is the word that we're using. Somebody entering the word password is more useful, is more likely than somebody entering AAAA BBB1, right? So when we're using a word list, we basically don't introduce any of that. We use common human words like, you know, password or aardvark or, or uh, you know, um, Ronin or whatever, any word like that. You know, any word that we would ever conceive in our head and possibly use, we use. Not something that is AAAA BBB1, for instance, right? Or AAAA BBB2, anything like that. We wouldn't use that. That's not normal. So word lists basically cut down all possibilities down to a select few, I guess you could say, in comparison, and we just use that. And it takes less time because there's less things to test against. See, when we're looking at rainbow tables, the big thing we have to look at is time versus space. You know, if we have a lot of these possible scenarios that are pre-calculated, we cut down a bit on time, but we're definitely chewing up on space with storing all of those possibilities. You get what I'm trying to go with, right? So when we're actually cracking a password that can be like eight characters or even more, God forbid, we have rainbow tables that are up in, again, those 600 gigabyte ranges. And again, you also have to remember that if we're running this off of a hard drive, right? You know, we also, cover, we also come across computer bottlenecks. Our processors may not be as fast. We may not be able to store a whole heck of a lot in memory. We may not be able to access a drive that fast to be able to do as many performances uh, or any, uh, any attempts uh, as we're intending to do, right? We have a lot of those issues when we come to dictionary or rainbow table cracking. Now, there are obviously a lot more methods of password cracking, password hashing, all that kind of good stuff. But ultimately, the biggest one to go up to is brute force hacking. Now, you may have heard of this in video games or movies and all that kind of good stuff, and brute force cracking, without making it sound as epic as it is, is basically the equivalent of typing into your keyboard. Let's assume it's an eight-character password, right? You would basically be typing in to begin with A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A. See that? Didn't work, right? A-A-A-A-A-A-A-B. Oh, that didn't work either? You get what I'm trying to go with, right? You're gonna go through all fucking possible scenarios for an eight character digit. And time exponentially increases per digit increase. So assuming it's a nine digit character, guess what? Anybody that's taken a stats class knows that the permutations have just fucking exceeded all possibilities for human testing. Now brute force cracking basically relies on computers putting forth the effort and time and processing power to figure out what you want. And of course, this becomes a time situation. You know, are you gonna sit there and try to figure out a password, you know, that will take you eight fucking uh, days maybe? Eight months, eight years, a lifetime, till the end of the world, till the sun goes supernova? How much are you willing to wait for a password? Because brute forcing, you might be able to get your way through, but again, it becomes a time situation. Now, going back to the eccentricities of these kind of password crackings, Remember when I mentioned salt, right? Well, salt is one of those things that killed a lot of these dictionary cracking, or I guess you could say um, rainbow table cracking to begin with. See, when we're talking about salt, look at a password hash, right? The things that you'll see that I'm referring to as salt is something like dollar signs, right? Or special characters. These are introduced to help destroy any form of pre-calculations in these rainbow hashes, right? Brute forcing, you know, even then, again, these are very, very intricate subjects and getting into them is video series on their own. But going back to the beginning, when you hear things about rainbow tables or, uh, you know, dictionaries, is that when you deal with salt, right? Salt can be introduced into a hashing algorithm in special ways, right? You can go out of your way to introduce it on a per creation basis. So each 
element of salt is introduced uniquely to each password created, which at that point fucks up the given situation even more. So now that we've covered general ways of password cracking, you may wonder, Muda, have you, have you tried it? Can I try this at home? You actually kind of can't, right? Now, one of the ways that you can sort of do this on your own is get free software for creating forms, right? There's plenty of things out there, free, free forum software, right? Free forum software that you can create a free web server, host onto it, and create, uh, create accounts with, right? So basically, for my testing purposes, and I'll just go over through this really quickly, I got Apache HTTP web servers, right? Which is basically a local web server you can use, you can run it through Unix, and it creates a basic web server that you can create websites on, all that kind of good stuff. I use it for work a lot, actually. We create web interfaces just to get things clear and uh, all interoperational stuff between computers done pretty quickly. So creating a web server is one thing. Then you can go and download free to use forum software, right? Forum software that is open source, sent out, you can just drop it in. It's basically how most forums on the deep web are really even made, for instance, right? Just dropping that comparison in there. You get these free forum softwares or you get any form of free software or something that can create accounts, right? Basically, you host it, you create an account, and on an SQL database for this forum software, we were able to get password hashes. Um, for all of the software or, or all the accounts that we could create on this local form that I had made. Now, of course, things aren't always perfect. This stuff could require you to introduce the hashing algorithm your own way. You could change stuff here and there. I went with very basic options. So by creating a uh, free account on my own local forum, I was able to get password hashes. You can take that password hash and knowing that what you entered to this password, you can run it against any form of rainbow table that is uh, geared towards the password algorithm that you use. So for example, if you hashed it using MD5, right? And you know exactly what the key MD5 used and provided there's no salt, of course, you could theoretically run it against a pre-calculated rainbow table that is perfect to begin with. Again, these things do cost money uh, if you want them pre-calculated, right? Like I believe the running rate is like 2,400 US dollars. Um, these may work. You know, you could brute force, you could do all that kind of stuff, but essentially you are dealt with a hash. If you know how to run that hash against an algorithm and, you know, basically figure out what it is, uh, how it's encoded, what it really is, then you basically get the password in a very simple way. So I know that I've covered a billion things, but in general, the things you have to remember is rainbow tables are fucking useless. Dictionary cracking is possible, but it is becoming useless as time goes on. People are creating truly random passwords that just aren't made from a human comprehension. And number three, brute forcing does exist, but it is exactly what you expect. It takes a lot of time, and at the very core, it's literally just a guessing game. And because of many securities that are introduced in devices nowadays, which feature limited amounts of entries before the device actually wipes itself, brute forcing is beginning to sort of go away. Now, what is the takeaway of all this? I see a lot of people complain about passwords basically being stolen and all that kind of stuff. And if anything is to be learned, ladies and gentlemen, is that when you're designing a password, it has to be, I would say, of a decent length. There has to be a lot of characters, numbers, and symbols. Because remember, once you introduce very special characters, if your password is a fucking Lenny face, a brute force cracker or rainbow tables have to calculate all possible Unicode entries. So remember it like this. Unicode means that you could enter it in English, you could enter it in Arabic, you could enter it in fucking Japanese, right? And some of those languages literally combine letters together, right? Some of those special characters may not even be in the realm of comprehension for a computer. So when you start introducing lots of these weird variables into your password, anyone trying to get access to it is probably going to want to blow their brains out when they have to realize how much time it takes to get into your possible account. Now. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I've given you some basic tips on setting up your passwords. I've basically taught you basic steps on how to crack a password, so to speak. But really, this kind of stuff is just meant to be an interesting, nerdy take at a pretty simple concept. So nothing super crazy out of the ordinary, ladies and gentlemen. I went super layman's on this just so I could get the point across and get the video out in a pretty respectable time. So let me know what you think about the video. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.